Welcome to Global Connections on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm your host, Jay Fidel. Today, we're going to talk about the defenders, 20 years of human rights lawyers in China. Our guests for the show are Shackley Ruffetto, retired judge, chief judge of the Second Circuit of Hawaii, and Yeshui Kao with China Change, a woman of great courage. Welcome to both of you to the show. Great to be here with you, Jay. Great to be here. I don't want to introduce uh, Yeshui because I would not do it right. Um, you need to you need to introduce Yeshui. Uh, okay, I'm happy to do that. I, we've just met, actually. Um, she came to Maui to meet and speak with me, and and she said, "Interview me." Um, she um, called called me as a result of a phone call from Professor Chen, who you've interviewed in the past, who is a Chinese law professor uh, who was imprisoned and finally. I uh, helped to get to the United States. He called me one day and said, oh, there's this lady who wants to talk to you. She's writing a book about uh, uh, civil rights and defense lawyers uh, being persecuted in China, and she has a website. And so I looked her up, and her website is chinachange.org, which she started. And we've just met and spent a, a day and a half of great conversations, and I've learned a lot from her about what she's up to. But first, I'd like to ask her to maybe just give you give us your origin story, where, where, you, where you were born. Uh, and I know it was in China, but people don't understand much about China in the US. So if you could tell us a little bit of your story and how you got to the United States and why, and then we'll move on to chinachange.org. How's that? Great. OK, thank you. Um, very, very nice to be here. Very honored. A great opportunity to speak to Hawaiians and beyond. Um, my name is Yashue, and uh, I came to the United States in 1991 to study literature. Uh, everybody told me when I was in graduate school, every other Chinese student told me, uh, oh, literature, what is it for? You can't find a job. So, but uh, uh, I have a job now, <laughs> already a very important job in my opinion. Um, so I came, I grew up uh, in um, uh, Shanxi province in China. I was born in the 1960s. My earliest memory is cultural revolution. So I had a little bit of brush with it. You know, can recall what was like, uh, what my family went through. Um, uh, and then in 1980, I went to uh, Beijing University in Beijing. It's uh, one of the uh, top universities in China. And uh, in 1991, I came over uh, here um, to study literature. Uh, where, where did you Where did you come to study? Uh, I came here to study. Um, uh, I went to Indiana University and studied uh, in the English department, which was a very dire, daring move because uh, I hardly um, spoke, uh, hardly had any uh, opportunities to speak English, to actually use the language. I, I had a decent reading knowledge uh, and the, my uh, grammar was very good. I remember my tof on my TOEFL score, I scored a full score. Mm. Uh, but uh, my hearing, uh, my listening, and my writing, all very poor speaking. But uh, before I left China, someone actually, American teacher uh, at the university met, met with me. She actually said, uh, well, uh, you won't, I think you won't make it. I said, uh, uh, trust me, I will make it. <laughs> so you came to America, eventually you met your husband and uh, and have two children and you live in Washington, D.C. And you you started, created ChinaChange.org. Now, what is it and why did you do that? Uh, well, China Change was, uh, I, uh, was, uh, officially launched on June 4th, 2013, but I started the work a little bit earlier in the fall of 2011. Up to that point, I or had already lived in the US for 20 years. Um, you know, I studied, I worked, I had a family, I had children. I didn't really care 
that much about what China, what was going on in China. So also uh, China became increasingly um, distant uh, to me. But in 2011, a uh, ac accidentally, I uh, um, hooked up uh, with a young American whose name is Tom Morse, and I started uh, blogging with him on the blog. Uh, that's the that's not China change yet. Uh, and uh, I started uh, looking at uh, what's going on in China, get on social media for the first time. And I was very, very taken back. Uh, there were a lot of uh, civil rights activities in China. There was a lot at the time, civil society activities, organization, people. It's uh, internet was very, very active. I was completely taken back. I was like, oh my God, this is great. When people uh, stop fearing about uh, fearing the government, that's the beginning for change. I think I want to uh, learn what they're doing. Uh, at the time, I didn't think anything at all that I could play a role. I just, uh, I just feel like I'm an onlooker, eager onlooker. But uh, uh, lo and behold, uh, a year and a half later, I decided that, you know what? I have something to contribute. I can, uh, thank God, I can write English. I'm a pretty decent writer. And uh, I have a... a in inherent understanding of the communist regime, and I can exp I can bring um, the uh, <clears throat> the China story. I call it a, the 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 other China, the story of the other China. What I mean by that is that it's the the part of China that's suppressed by the communist the propaganda and the official narrative, uh, so on and so forth. And I can bring their story, their messages, their information to the rest of the world. So I launched the ChinaChange.org. And what was the mission statement of China Change at that point? Did you have a specific thing in mind? Yes. So the specific mm -hmm. thing, as I said, is we want to write about the part of China that is uh, uh, suppressed, um, marginalized. So in other words, think about uh, what uh, the communist regime would uh, uh, suppress and uh, marginalize, human rights, rule of law, civil society. So that three items, uh, each is big, um, is uh, uh, our mission. So, um, but how did that draw you to um, wanting to interview and expand your, your interest and influence with regard to Chinese lawyers in particular and the legal system? Um, the, uh, the Chinese lawyers, they are, uh, they have had a hard time from the very beginning. They are, the human rights lawyers are, in, in to simply explain it, are the lawyers who dare to defy a uh, judicial system that doesn't really uh, respect the law, uh, surprisingly, and uh, they are uh, they fought tooth and nail every step of the way in the process to make to make sure the law is applied properly. Uh, they very often end in failure, but they do this and they represent uh, cases uh, like a human uh, political dissidents, political prisoners, uh, farmers whose land were taken by developers, uh, supported by the state, uh, religi uh, believers, religious believers, and the uh, private entrepreneurs, journalists, whoever, whoever under uh, the judicial attack, they defend them, including some uh, um, Communist Party high-ranking officials uh, when they are um, falling from uh, grace, they find that uh, what they need is a due process <laughs> and, and it's lacking. 
Um, so these lawyers are under severe um, attack. So once you decided that you wanted to inquire into this subject matter, mm -hmm. how did you go about doing that? And, and how did you get in, actually get in contact with some mm -hmm. of these lawyers? Naturally, my uh, our coverage at ChinaChange.org uh, extended to these lawyers, especially since 2015, uh, because uh, since in 2015, something happened. If you uh, Google, just Google 709 crackdown, you will find tons of coverage in New York Times, Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, and all the mainstream media outlets statement from uh, statements from uh, um, uh, international uh, bar associations across uh, in Europe, in America, in Netherlands, in, in England, a lot of uh, professional su uh, support. What happened is that uh, uh, the the number seven oh nine starts uh, is from uh, is from July 9th, twenty fifteen. So seven oh nine. It's uh, on that day the Ch uh, the Chinese authorities started uh, arresting uh, scores of uh, human rights lawyers and their staffers. Uh, so within a um, few days, they arrested. Uh, uh, 20 more than 20 lawyers and their staffers and they questioned summoned or visited uh, by police uh three more than 300 lawyers and the legal activists uh, eventually they threw um uh, six or seven of them into jail sentenced them to two years from any uh, from two years to eight years the last 709 defendant only came out last May. Now, the, the, amongst the number of uh, lawyers who were picked up, that included my friend, Professor Chen, right? Yes, mm. yes. You uh, included um, a Professor Chen Taihe, who <laughs> visited Hawaii uh, uh, as part of uh, uh, Judge Rofeto's uh, um, Rafetov's uh, uh, what's called the Quarter Observer Program, and uh, he was supposed to do this uh, jury trial lectures and and uh, uh, mock trials in China with the, the judge, but uh, um, it was uh, swiftly uh, blocked by the authority and canceled eventually. Let me interject it. That uh, Professor Chen and, and a, a group that he brought over to Hawaii, I hosted and uh, showed around the court system and showed a jury trial. And then you on ThinkTech interviewed all of us. So it's for those who are interested, they can see the interview of Professor Chen and his group uh, by ThinkTech Hawaii. So we were at, at the vanguard. So, did you tell how many of these lawyers have you talked to now? What have you done? So ever since 2015, I have been um, interviewing them a lot. Some of them uh, wrote their own account of a torture, secret detention, um, interrogation, uh, so on and so forth. So in those cases, I translate their own accounts. Uh, and on, uh, in other cases, I interview them for their story. And uh, I have, uh, so far over the years, uh, interviewed for about over 250 hours of them, just the, the human rights lawyers, remarkable uh, stories. You did a documentary too as well, did you not? Yes, in 2022, I made the documentary uh, titled The Defenders, 20 years of a human rights, uh, oh, human rights lawyers, 20 years of a human rights lawyers in China. It's on YouTube. Uh, take a look. It's a 68 minutes. Thir no fewer than 33 lawyers were featured. So the in the film, you will hear 30 plus lawyers 
speaking uh, for themselves. It's uh, quite a, a, a remarkable in that regard. So it's a film um, that reviews the 20 years. It's a very short history. The human rights lawyers' uh, history is very short. Um, uh, you could uh, uh, get a, a, a good good uh, idea what these lawyers have been doing over the last twenty years, what ha they have, uh, what kind of attacks they have uh, come under, and uh, how they uh, persevered and uh, how they uh, fought back. Just uh, incredible. I have an American um, uh, friend who's a lawyer, uh, who's a, a, a Chinese-American, born and raised here, but he's a Chinese. He watched the film. He said, uh, I can never imagine myself doing this. They're so brave. It's incredible. I understand now that you, you, you're you working on a book on this subject. Is that correct? Um, yes, I think the 709 story needs to be told to the entire world. Uh, you know, I was talking to a, a judge uh, right before uh, we get on the uh, the the uh, the room Zoom. I was thinking, people, um, we become uh, desensitized when we just. Uh, talk on the uh, abstract level. We all know China is a dictatorship. And we all know it's a repressive. We all know it doesn't uh, uh, respect the human rights, but it's only when the story, uh, our stories are properly told, you begin, it brings our human consciousness, uh, our realization to a different level. Uh, so that's why I want to write the story. And also, the story has uh, so many dimensions. Um, it uh, has the political dimension. It has uh, obviously the legal dimension. It it has uh, uh, contains remarkable, remarkable, moving, heartbreaking human stories in it. And several, some of them are Christians. How they uh, at the uh, uh, difficult times like that, how they resort to their faith, and just the all sorts of uh, um, how average wives. There's a there's a group of uh, a woman called the Seven O Nine Wives. Hmm. They were average housewives. They didn't they didn't even know before the crackdown what their husbands were exactly doing because the husbands didn't want to stress their their wives. But all of a sudden, police took their wife, uh, took their husbands away. So these wife all of a sudden wake up to this uh, new reality, and lo and behold, uh, several months later, they become they themselves become the the fighter, the warriors, uh, fighting um, a tenacious uh, battle to save their husbands. Have you have you interviewed any of the wives? Yes. So, mm. and how do you conduct conduct these interviews? Um, well, <laughs> I probably need to keep some of the oh, okay. information. Uh, yeah, <laughs> confidential. But uh, but there are ways. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, we're so the internet made uh, is really revolutionary for my work at least. Uh, but uh, it made the it, before social media, before these uh, messaging uh, apps, before uh, um, tools like uh, the video conferencing tools, it's impossible for me to talk to people in real time, um, in depth. Uh, uh, it's, uh, yeah, there are ways, many ways. We've been talking since she's been here. Um... Because I, I thought she was going to interview me about Professor Chen, but that we've moved on from that, I guess. And uh, she, you know, when I started teaching in China, I prepared a lot of PowerPoints about the rights of criminal defendants, how jury trials work, uh, and and so on, evidence and things like that. So I've given them all to her. I even did one on organized crime and some other things that I was lecturing in China and other places. 
she's a I think the plan is to put those on her website so that they could be made available uh, uh, to ch Chinese lawyer, China, lawyers in China can access that information. She'll translate them into to Chinese. Correct me if I'm saying this right. And one of the things that we found actually was I, uh, when I did the jury trial mood in China, I used an actual transcript from a short criminal trial that I, that I had conducted in my own court. And when I got to China to put the program on, which was eventually canceled by the Chinese government, they translated it into China, the whole transcript. So I've given her that transcript in Chinese. So that'll be the, a, a full American criminal jury trial will be in Chinese available on her website to anyone in China who wants to read it. Any other ideas? Yes, that's exactly what uh, I intend to do. I want to say that the reason I uh, flew out to Hawaii all the way from DC is that uh, um, judge did something uh, very, very unusual. Um, he went to China for 15 years, uh, volunteer uh, to be a volunteer judge for the uh, Jessup uh, international law competition. That itself is remarkable to be going there for 15 years consecutively. Mm -hmm. um, the kind of uh, uh, exposure uh, and uh, dedication commitment, that itself is remarkable. The other thing is that uh, he uh, tried uh, around 2014, mm -hmm. 13, 15, yes. yeah. Um, to do this uh, series about a uh, uh, jury trial. What is a jury trial? And uh, he actually did it uh, twice. I learned this uh, from your interview with him. So thank you so much, <laughs> your coffee hour. with uh, I had the transcript, uh, I printed out, I read, I marked it, I had my questions. So that's a very good foundation, by the way, for my uh, visit here. Um, otherwise, I'll come here completely blank. Um, but uh, um, he did, the uh, judge had the two uh, mock tri jury trials, mock trials mm -hmm. in, uh, in two universities where he taught. But uh, in 2013, 14, he wanted to have a program set up to show the Chinese law students what a, a jury trial is. And uh, uh, it got canceled. Uh, for, uh, if you think like the Communist Party, for good reason, uh, because this is the heart of American justice system that the regime does not want their law, legal professionals, whether you're professor, students, or lawyers, to think about it. One of the 709 lawyers, he told me, uh, was very much into, and Chen Taihe, uh, mm -hmm. judge's friend, Professor Chen, the two of them, were, and there's a third lawyer uh, uh, within the 709 lawyers, they were deeply into jury trial. They believe that the jury trial is the way to go to uh, realize real justice um, uh, in China. But uh, um, they were, um, that's the very reason they were arrested. So one of the lawyers told me recently that he said the, the first year he was in detention, uh, first six months in secret detention, another six months in um, uh, detention center, which is a cell, uh, it's a uh, cell with the other mates. So the secret detention is a solitary uh, detention. He said that for an entire year, the main content of their interrogation is the two jury trials, mock trial. He held his own mock trial in China for about for 60, 50 law lawyers. He said that that's really my main crime. So this just gives you an idea why judge jury trial in China was canceled and why Chinese government doesn't want uh, its lawyers, its law professors, law students to explore this, what is 
uh, with his child. Tell him about document nine. Yeah. And uh, so I, when uh, Judge told, uh, sent me photos of uh, his lectures and uh, I, I, I looked up the year, it was 2014. So I sent him a translation of uh, 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 the Communist Party's internal document called the document number nine, which uh, was uh, issued internally first um, to universities, uh, to uh, in their own communist system, it uh, forbids seven areas uh, to be discussed. Discussed. So one of the areas is uh, judicial independence, rule of law. Uh, so another area is a press freedom. Another area is a free speech, internet freedom. Uh, and so on and so forth. So I I, I sent him a, a translation of this document. There was a, at the time there was a lot of a discussion in mainstream media here, um, and uh, I said the judge, do you know why your lectures, uh, why your plan to do the trials were canceled? Uh, this is why. Read this document. Okay. You got to China at the moment when they're just getting ready to slam the door close. So I didn't know. I, th I thought it was because uh, my friendship with Professor Chen, so it was both probably, but mainly the change in attitude about uh, any information from the outside coming in about liberalizing the justice system, uh, which is very interesting. I would like to ask about that. I would like to ask about the change. You mm -hmm. left in 1991. Things mm -hmm. changed. Uh, uh, was it Deng Xiaoping was was running things at that time? Um, there, there was a the door was opening. Mm, there was a notion of uh, you know uh, Chinese outreach, uh, Chinese capital, mm -hmm. uh, if you will, uh, Chinese business connecting with the world. Opening the door, and, and in fact, my trips to China in the early 2000s showed that. And there were a lot of lawyers I met. None of them were civil rights lawyers, by the way. Um, but somewhere along the line, after you left China, things changed, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, suppression came to be the 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 normal. Can you talk about that? Yeah. Um... The Communist Party, uh, remember when it uh, began the reform and the opening up, um, it needed the world. It needed the, especially the United States. So it opened all these, uh, um, um, sent students here, had the more policies uh, and uh, got foreign investment, uh, uh, so on and so forth. In two, uh, 2002, China joined the WTO. The economy took off all that uh, as the whole world uh, was uh, uh, amazed how China has developed. Uh, but uh, uh, the last 12 years, um, it's uh, different. No, I want to go back to say a little bit. It is also, keep in mind, it is also Deng Xiaoping who, while directed the opening up, he was also the person who said, we must uh, insist, preserve the four basic uh, principles. The four basic principles is this. I might not quote uh, completely verbatim, but, uh, but uh, you get the gist of it. It's a... Uh, Preserve Mao Zedong's thought, preserve uh, Communist Party's rule, preserve this and that uh, Marxist Leninism, preserve socialist uh, um, uh, 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 system. Well, we can argue whether China is a real socialism, but uh, we don't have time for that. So you have to, so there you see the two faces of Deng Xiaoping, very pragmatic, but uh, politically, he knew exactly what he was doing. It's not, it's, it has never meant to be political and by extension, legal liberation, no. Uh, so that's why we come to today. So Xi Jinping is not an oddity, please. He's simply someone who is a, he's a continuation of Deng Xiaoping, but someone asked the crisis, economic uh, 
and the political, especially political pressure grows, he he's someone who come down with the iron fist. That's it. My theory is always, uh, if we don't have a Xi Jinping, we'll have a Li Jinping, we'll have a Zhang Jinping. It's, a, it's just, a, it's in character. What happened in his last 12 years is completely in character with the party. So now I want to mention uh, here, we very few people talk about China's judicial reform uh, over the years. Mm -hmm. Yes, there was, uh, until uh, late um, 90s, uh, you know, China will choose uh, uh, retired, not retired, veterans from military, military cadre. When they leave for uh, military, they would have put them in court to be the judge. So from this one uh, one practice, you can tell that in their mind, uh, law is not really a uh, profession. Uh, there's there isn't a professionalism uh, per se in their in the Communist Party's earlier perception two decades ago. It's a uh, it's a uh, uh, it's a tool of the dictatorship. That's why they have this uh, party member, military man, uh, uh, after they leave uh, uh, the army to be judge, uh, to be judges. So one of the law professor I remember wrote a uh, newspaper column at the time. Um, he said, uh, you know, you do not send uh, uh, veterans to be a doctor to be a, a, a surgeon <laughs> because, <I hope> not. <laughs> yeah, uh, because you know it requires uh, 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 training and skills and, and uh, professionalism. But uh, in your mind, you don't think a, a, a court of law requires uh, uh, training, skills, knowledge of law. So uh, after that, I must give the Communist Party credit that uh, slowly the the judges and the prosecutors, uh, lawyers, they all go through a uh, judicial exam. So basically, you have to have a good degree, law degree, to pass the exam. Um, but uh, uh, but uh, what remains the same is that uh, the court is still a tool of the party. The party will dictate um, in some in what they deemed political sensitive uh, cases. Um, uh, the party will uh, give uh, orders how this person should be charged, how this person should be sentenced. Uh, uh, trials were rehearsed. The people were tortured to um, to um, uh, confess uh, guilt. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, witnesses were trained to work with the uh, uh, pro uh, prosecutors. It's all still the same, just as in 1980s, 1990s. And and what my my what I'm saying is that uh, uh, at the core, nothing that much has changed. Let me ask you. Uh, we're getting close to the uh, mm -hmm. end of our time. Let me ask you. What was what was the crime? that the uh, lawyers who, of the 709 group were convicted of that ended that resulted in their prison sentences and how long did they go to prison for? What, what, what was their crime? They were charged and the quote convicted of a subversion of a state power simply for uh, arguing a little harder with the judges in the court, uh, fight for their defendants' rights, um, bring some uh, information to the internet to inform the public in order to rally support simply for doing this. They were uh, charged uh, with the subversion of uh, state power, which is the equivalent uh, to Mao's eras, the crime of a uh, uh, counter-revolution 
the crime of a counter revolution. And uh, as China uh, opened up a reform to have this new look, they simply changed the name of the crime. It's really an old time is the crime of a counter revolution. What happened to their clients? Uh, were, th were the arguments they made ac accepted at all or no? Or did their clients all, were their clients all found guilty and sent to jail also? Uh, yes. And uh, I guess uh, I would also ask you, so 709, that's a robust number. What about the next 709 and the 709 after that? Or, or have the lawyers involved, any lawyer in China who might be charged among the 709 or the successors 709, have they stopped doing civil rights? After 709, 709 didn't just stop at the arrest and the charges and the thro uh, being thrown in the, uh, into pris prison. Um, China also, from uh, 2015 on, China has uh, disbarred, uh, revoked the license of uh, well over 40 human rights lawyers. So that has a huge impact on the human rights lawyer community. So a lot, lot, some of them uh, have kept their license, luck, luckily, but uh, their work uh, was nothing like uh, before 709. Uh, they make a very little um, 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 uh, they speak up a lot less. They're very, very cautious. Uh, otherwise, they'll lose their license overnight. So it's very, it's a very, uh, right now, I would describe the atmosphere is very, very fearful, um, uh, very depressed. When, when they lose their license, how, how does that happen? Does the, do they get a letter in the mail saying your license is revoked or how does that work? <laughs> uh, the Chinese government likes to go through a rigmarole that uh, has the appearance of a due process, mm. but it's all um, artificial, it's all fake. So they will, uh, the, uh, the judicial authority, which is called the, the Bureau of Justice, uh, they should be really called <laughs> the Bureau of Injustice, uh, will send the lawyer a letter informing him or her that, uh, oh, you have done something really bad, we need to investigate you. So that's step one. Step two, we are going to have a hearing. You're allowed to bring two defenders with you, and we're going to have this hearing. And uh, the defenders will argue uh, in the, during the hearing rigorously. Nothing works. Not a single hearing resulted in overturning their decision. So another two weeks or a week or three days later, or a month later, they issue you, well, we do not accept your argument. Here you are, your license is revoked. But, but do, do they give a reason for the revocation? Is it is it subversion of state power or incompetence oh, as a lawyer or what? No, in that, in the uh, license uh, uh, revocation, uh, revocation cases, they simply say, uh, it's not a criminal charge. Mm -hmm. They simply say, oh, you were, you were, uh, you disrespected the, the judge, the judges in the court, or you uh, uh, accepted the foreign media, the anti China forces uh, interviews, mm -hmm. or you uh, hyped your case uh, on social media. Uh, all of this, uh, any of this is enough to get your. Uh, license revoked. So you can imagine Chinese lawyers' uh, circumstances, very difficult. Once your license is revoked, can you uh, reapply and have it? Uh... Uh, there are two types of uh, uh, revocation, I would say. Uh, one is uh, uh, you are basically um, deregistered. In that case, you are in theory you could uh, reapply or be re, um, uh, re reinstalled, but uh, that has never happened. Not a single case. And the, and then the the uh, the other type is a permanent uh, cancellation. <laughs> you are uh, for the rest of your life. You're not allowed to. You're not going to be a lawyer anymore. So, so it's really hard. So a loss of a 
livelihood to say the least. So there's phase one permanent and phase two permanent. Uh huh. It's it's all permanent. <laughs> it's a, you know your comments have made me think that there is a rule of law in China, but the system doesn't enforce the rule of law. They they kind of ignore it when it suits the state. Am I right? I mean, for example, you know, uh, Shackley Ruffetto teaches uh, uh, in the Jessup program, uh, you know, jury trials. Is there a provision in Chinese law to have a jury trial? Um, is there a provision in Chinese law to allow the defense of human rights cases? Um, but the courts don't don't simply allow that. They don't follow the law. So is it a question of the law exists but isn't followed, or is it a question of the law does not exist? The law exists. China's laws are by and large, actually, according to the lawyers, I'm, I'm not a legal professional, uh, are by and large pretty good. But it's uh, once you, especially when you get into the uh, these uh, human rights cases, um, it's completely thrown out of the window. It doesn't count. I wanted to ask you one other thing before we need to break, and that is, um, you know, you have spent uh, a career, I shouldn't mm -hmm. say a lifetime because we have many miles to go. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> you have spent a career raising these issues, making mm -hmm. films of these issues, now writing books about these issues. What can you hope to achieve in China as a matter of public policy? Or is this uh, immutable, unchangeable, uh, where your efforts will fall ultimately on deaf ears? Uh, well, I do ask these questions, but you have to look at the, uh, the whole thing uh, from a, a, a different perspective, which is uh, uh, the society, the world, China, everything is in constant change. Uh, we are part of the ch uh, mm, uh, we're part of a player in this, uh, um, uh, you can see it as a constant river. The economy changes, the population changes, the regime itself has uh, internal problems. And uh, for me, uh, I like to see more people doing what I have been doing, which is uh, bring their information to the world so people know, you know, for example, Jay today uh, learned more, you know, <laughs> might think China a little differently, might think, might even go home tonight thinking, uh, oh, uh, what can I do? Maybe I can do something too. I mean, or our, the very fact that we're sitting here talking is something. So every, uh, I don't think myself as someone who's going to move the mountains and uh, whatever, but uh, to be a uh, individual to attribute this for ten years, our website is uh, uh, a collection is collected by the Library of Congress, meaning that we have been doing good work. So it's all there. It does change mind. It's because everything starts from information. So that's what I'm doing. If you look at uh, it that way, I'm I'm an information. Um, uh, worker you can in a way you can i bring stories here i tell you guys about their stories and and the uh, uh, uh judge uh judge rofito's uh, uh work i want to bring to the chinese lawyers uh i want to write a book about 709 uh talk to a bigger uh readership and uh, eventually when we all make an effort when we all recognize the need for change, we all contribute uh, as individuals. Uh, one of my, when I first get on on uh, Twitter, my tagline uh, still is my tagline is uh, "Put my freedom to use." So if we all put our freedom to use, a um, lot of things will happen. At the same time, uh, as history always does, things will converge. It will tomorrow, trust me, maybe tomorrow looks exactly like uh, today, but uh, in five years, 10 years, trust me, China is not going to uh, uh, be the same. So this morning I had the pleasure 
uh, to uh, breakfast with uh, several uh, Hawaiian uh, lawyers. I said, uh, so they asked me uh, uh, a question along the same line. Uh, they said, uh, well, well, what do you think about China's future? I said, I started by saying, I said, the one thing I'm 100% certain is that uh, Xi Jinping will die. <laughs> Can you say um, that's not certain? So we are, um, things are um, coming to heads and uh, things are uh, uh, changing. Economy is changing, population is changing, and a lot of things is changing. And uh, I feel completely honored, even chosen, maybe that's a little uh, too much, too conceited, to be part of uh, this picture of change, to be con contributing uh, 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 individual. And how does Xi Jinping feel about you? You know, there, there'll be uh, the Chinese, the Chinese New Year is coming uh, early 2025. Do you think he's going to send you a New Year's card? <laughs> <laughs> For one thing, I can't go back to China. I, I, I will run into a grave danger. Um, yeah. But this uh, this interview could be put on your website, right? Yes. Okay. And then it'll become part of the congressional record because all <laughs> The website is picked up by the Congressional Record now. Well, Shackley, we've had a great discussion, uh, mm -hmm. and I wonder if you could sort of uh, summarize and wrap it up. Oh, well, and uh, this has been a, a kind of a surprise for me because I wasn't sure why I was being interviewed by Yashe, but um, it's been uh, very, very interesting. I learned a lot about China that I didn't know, and I learned the, probably what the reason was why my program was canceled, which I didn't realize. And uh, I'm looking forward to working with her and, and hopefully putting my materials to the extent that they're helpful on her website. So I'll make my small contribution as well. And I think what she's doing is very admirable. I mean, that's what, that's what, she, that's what good, great, good and great change requires is for a few good people to step forward. Remember, yeah. put our freedom to use. Yes. Well, I wanted to ask you, Yeshua, if, if you would address the people who will look at this later, what message would you leave with them? I want to say that uh, a totalitarian China uh, is not only a threat. Uh, it's already um, uh, with the Chinese people uh, under its feet uh, and or boots. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but uh, if we don't curb it, we don't change China. Um, actually, uh, as a lot of people are saying here, Americans say it's already in our gate. It's already in our gate. Uh, we shouldn't think China is a faraway country. Their affairs are not our affairs. Uh, who cares? We really shouldn't. Uh, Americans shouldn't be thinking that way anymore. We don't have. A, we already lose lost the, the luxury to think that way. Um, we need to uh, make sure uh, China changes for the better. A half a rule of law, half democracy. People have the uh, 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 the agency, uh, the the society, the whole system, this country, this huge country with a one quarter of a human population isn't a threat to the values uh, we live by, to the uh, style we um, are used to and uh, to the American, um, I love this country to, to this great country. But we have okay. made mistakes, I must say, United States. United States single-handedly raised this monster. So now we have to wrestle with it. <laughs> and uh, let's all jump in and do something. <laughs> at least, at the very least, if you, uh, if uh, our audience uh, members in our audience think, well, uh, what can I do? I mean, I don't speak Chinese. I have a job, I'm in a, uh, which is true. How about to just get yourself more informed? That's good enough to me, to be less ignorant about what's going on in China. Yeah, should we cow, Shackley Raffetto? 
Thank you both for this wonderful and a very important discussion. Aloha. 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 Aloha.